we will go to the only remaining brewery in Amsterdam. Heineken left, which is probably a good thing. They still brew good beer here. It's at the Thai Brewery. Next on Beer Trek. <laughs> the symbol of Holland, but this is no ordinary mill. It is home to the Thai Brewery, just off the shores of the Thai Canal. It is one of the few remaining independent Dutch breweries, and the only brewery in Amsterdam, Heineken having moved their operations long ago. But this small Dutch brewery proves craft brewing in the Netherlands is a tradition that is still thriving. Also known as the Windmill Brewery, and uh, this is their um, Zakte. It's uh, a beer in the um, strong Golden Belgian tradition, and uh, it's uh, a very s dangerous smooth beer at eight uh, percent. In fact, uh, except for their Pilsner, the lightest beer they brew here right now happens to be a box. So that'll give you an idea of the kind of gravity that they uh, brew here. So. Um, Excellent beer, best beer in Amsterdam. We're at the Tay Brewery off center in Amsterdam and we're drinking their Zate beer. It seems like a strong Belgian ale. Definitely a distant cousin of Alambic, has some wild yeast in the Romus and Britannomyces. Fairly malty beer, not as sour in the flavor. Nice, fairly simple, strong Belgian ale. Very nice. Mm. It's a real tart aroma that uh, definitely means it's got some, some wild yeast in there. Uh, it's, it's reminiscent of a Belgian, but a little more subtle. I like the subtlety. Uh, it's certainly easier to drink if you're not used to this kind of beer, uh, but yet there's plenty of alcohol in here. In fact, I can feel myself warming up right now. I'm Art Steinoff from Wisconsin. This is my first beer trek. And I'm trying a beer called Zate. It, I think this beer is malty. Um, not very carbonated. Um, has a nice aroma. Seems like there might be some wild yeast in it. Um, I think it's lightly hopped. A nice drinkable beer. 
for, for the area. I think I think this is like one of their everyday beers. Thirteen years ago, our uh, the brewer, which is still a brewer right now, Casper Petersel, uh, bought this uh, old bathing house, this pl public bath. And uh, because uh, uh, the community, I don't know how you call it, the, the local government of Amsterdam, uh, they didn't want to, uh, they didn't need it anymore because all the houses around here had their own sanitary uh, like uh, showers, etc. But they didn't want it anymore. What they did is, uh, well, sell it to Casper Peterson, who was a brewer. And therefore, uh, for that, he was uh, located, uh, the brewery is located in the Squats. Know what that means? Yeah. S Q U A T. Mm, well, knowing what it means in English, yes. Yeah, that's. That's it. deposit themselves illegally in the property. <laughs> yeah, they that's deposit. Right. Uh, people are taking a building which is standing empty. That's right. They're yeah. not paying rent and rates. Yeah, right, that's right. right. Because they are uh, right. opposite right. to the. Mm. the you know what it means? Yeah. Um, and therefore, it was it uh, the 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 lake here. Lake in our university, mm -hmm. the egg, the egg. That's why it's called Brouwerij Egg Brewery. The egg, uh, the right. added egg. It's a geographical name. This first kettle you see here, uh, we put barley malt uh, with water of uh, 52 degrees Celsius. Um, there's a kind of uh, a mill inside this one. It's, uh, uh, it's an agitator. Yeah, yeah, the liquid is also so it's sparkling. Yeah, indeed, and. Um, so um, then you put it up to 63 degrees, um, 68, 72, and 76 degrees Celsius. Uh, every time there is a, a nice look, uh, enzyme and enzymes uh, are different at different temperatures. Different enzymes are working in the enzyme enzymes you need later in the process for a lot of things like. Um, Taste or uh, the hops, which are added, uh, etc., etc. Also for a uh, little bit of uh, carbonic acid. Yeah, it's. Uh, then, well, it stays here in about three, three and a half hours. Then uh, we stop the mill inside. Uh, the liquid is going through the the barley, which is used. The barley we sell to uh, to a farmer. Uh, to a ranch, well, ranch, <laughs> a farmer, uh, which lives uh, who lives uh, outside of Amsterdam, and uh, to feed his uh, cows. Um, then the liquid is pumped into this kettle, and there uh, the hop is added. Hops are added. And then you talk about hopped wort. The liquid here is called wort, W-O-R-T, and now in this kettle it's it's hop wort. Here we go, there we go. Be careful, yes. There we go, here we go. Um, okay, you see here uh, the yeast uh, tanks? Yeah. Fermentation tanks. Fermentation tanks, right. <laughs> Sorry, wrong. It's all right. <laughs> uh, well, the, the, the yeast is added here. Yeah. What yeast is a unicellular organism, which is uh, rather nice to. Uh, well, she, they use uh, sugar and uh, air to, uh, and they make, well, for uh, ex excrements, they make uh, alcohol, which is very nice. Um, you have two uh, ways of fermentation. One is the top fermentation, and one is the bottom fermentation, yeah. which only says that after the the, the yeast is uh, has done their job, they're going uh, one way. They're gonna lie on top of the liquid, or they're gonna uh, or they they're sink lying the down. Bottom, yeah, they sink to the bottom when they when their job's done. Um, the the bottom fermentation we only use for our pilsen. And it stays here for eight to ten days by a uh, temperature which lies about eight degrees Celsius. The other beers, they are top uh, fermentation. They stay here for about a week uh, at some 25 degrees Celsius. They say this brewery used to be a bathhouse. Careful, smell. Well, when you see the large tanks downstairs, it's pumped up right here. 
then a little yeast uh, is added uh, before it's going into bottles or into crates. Is that all your beers, a little yeast? Yeah, a little bit of yeast because we, um, you always say on a bottle there stays a little bit of um, oxygen and the yeast is, uh, they, they eat it. So we, we have a natural way of keeping our beers uh, nice. Mm -hmm. So it's a bottle conditioned beer. Yeah, bottle conditioned beer, yeah. yeah. And we, uh, so, and that's, that goes also for the crates. To talk about the Tay beer is just to talk about malt. With a two and a half hour mash and a three and a half hour boil, you're going to get a lot of compounds to get a very malty texture, with or without a lot of residual gravity. An extremely malty aroma, Still a little bit of that sourness from wild yeast. Wonderful character. Like a big malted milk ball. Powerful mouthfeel. Real beer sticks to the inside of your ribs. Wonderful beer. The local gent that gave us that very nice tour of the brewery said that they chose the ostrich as their symbol because the brewmaster liked it more than he liked the pig. Probably a good choice. But the, actually, the really reason why they chose the ostrich is a little play on words. The brewery here is named after Tay. It's a waterway that runs alongside the brewery here. But Tay is also a Dutch word for egg, and what makes the largest eggs in the world but an ostrich, hence their symbol. Their beers are exotic. Malty, spicy, beautiful. It's really nice that in a city as grand as Amsterdam, there is still one good brewery, and that's Tay. Cheers. The Tay Brewery was opened in 1984 by Dutch songwriter Caspar Peterson. On a beer trek in Amsterdam, one easily gets lost in the many canals. Busy Dam Square. And numerous temptations of the famous Red Light District. There is good beer to be found here, though much of it is imported from nearby Belgium. Not tempted by these and other Dutch treats, we continued our trek, seeking traditional Dutch beer. by Amsterdam's many vices and winding lanes, and with the help of a map that didn't suck, we sought out for more traditional Dutch beer. At last, along yet another canal, we meet our goal. In the new market, we find a new brew pub. the Maximilian House Brewery, the only brew pub in Amsterdam.
Amsterdam's only other brewery, which is the Maximilian Brauhaus, and we're drinking their Bach, Maximator. Malty, slightly tart aroma. Mm, very nice. Somewhat tart flavor as well. It's a wheat Bach, I hear, and I think you can definitely get that in the taste. Not the most traditional beer, but a very good one. Yeah. I'm enjoying the cloche, the bethanine. It's a very delicate, light, refreshing beer. Um, I don't know if it's named after the Bethlehem star or anything, but it's clear as a star, crystal clear. Um, very enjoyable. It's hopped with Herzbrucker and uh, Perlay hops. Very nice beer. We're in the heart of Amsterdam, not too far from the Red Light District, and this is a brew pub. The only other brewery in Amsterdam, and uh, even if they were still here, it would be one of the only two good breweries. And uh, this is Maximilian. This is their triple. And uh, it's, um, it's, it's, a, it's a classic triple. Um, very smooth, spicy. Um, not as wild as some of the triples we've had, uh, more smooth. Um, great brew pub. Okay, here we are at the Maximilian, the brew pub, actually a cafe they call it, uh, Brow House. Uh, it's is all copper, it's a beautiful system, it's 10 hectoliters, which is about 7 barrels, about the same size as the uh, brewmaster pub where I work. But uh, a lot prettier. Beautiful system. Uh, appears to be very well made. Very clean, spotless. But I wouldn't like to have to shine it, clean it up. No patina here. This is a working brewery. I wish it was mine. It is beautiful. Huh? Beautiful. This quite neat. Like it's yes. beautiful. Yes. Right. Yeah. And these are types that came the mash time, is it? Yeah, right. these, these, these are these are the lachoups. Lachoups. <laughs> the Maximilian Brew Pub is operated by Albert and Casper Hoffman and their charming tykes. The Netherlands have borrowed much of their brewing style from neighboring countries, such as Bach beer from Germany and Abbey-style ale from Belgium. Tilburg, close to the Belgian border, is home to one of only six Trappist Monastery breweries in the world, La Trappe. The Abbey Koningshoven, or King's Garden, is a Trappist monastery founded in 1884. Trappist monks are named for the Abbey La Trappe in Normandy, where a strict order of monastic life, first set down by Saint Benedict, mandated hard labor and self-sufficiency for its members. And so many abbeys produce bread, cheese, and of course, beer. That is our, our old, old brew house. We don't use it anymore because we built uh, a new one in 1990. Just time to build a new one, or yeah. The, now the, only this this was uh, in good shape, and the other two, the the Waterstein and the water kettle, are uh, bad shape uh. because they are of iron. Oh, okay. oh. It is it is uh, painted, but it's iron. Ah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So and then in the Waterstein, it causes a lot of trouble. How different yeah. is the beer because of that? Is it? You think it's? No, different? I think it's better. I think it's better. We, could, we have now more constant quality. Yeah. We brew uh, 100, uh, between 120 and 140 hectares.
we make one brew a day in the winter. In the some are going up to uh, three uh, no, brews a day. Bell, bell, bell. Yeah. And, uh, I think we have this year total production of 50,000 uh, hectares. Captain, we need more power. Has the beer always been sold to the public? Been yeah, available? yeah, yeah. It, it was set up as a commercial uh, brewery. Yeah. As I told, it was first for uh, to have some income to build a monastery. Ah. It, it was commercial. The recipes have changed much over the years. Yeah, we developed a new ones. Eh? When I started here in 1980, there was only one La Trap. It was called La Trap. And after the La Trap, we, we uh, developed triple from that La Trap. Mm -hmm. and, and a double was the next one. And then we did, developed a single. And the quadruple is only now, I think, in the Is the name of the beer brewed at 
the Abbey Konigshoven in Tilburg. Fall in the Netherlands means Bach beer, and even Heineken brews a special Kairobach for the annual Bach beer festival in Amsterdam. beers and this is their Bach excellent at the festival uh, fruity but very smooth you do not taste any alcohol esters dangerous as a Dunkel Bach beautiful beer where'd you get those I've been busy you have oh. after my own heart. Before I forget, we are drinking Heeren van Beek Bach beer from Beek. A brand new brew pub, so new, it's not even in the program for this festival. A somewhat malty aroma, a tad bit whiny, not a very good characteristic. Some good malt, some good bread-like characteristics, still a tad bit whiny, a little bit off flavor, but I think it's got an awful lot of potential for a new brew pub. And now for something completely different. <laughs> he's good, he's really good. And you know what? That's his only line. <laughs> the that's, lark. that's his only line. That one too. That's his only other line. Okay. You know, it's very nice to see that so many microbreweries are starting up in the Netherlands when it seemed as though the whole brewing industry was shutting down and being taken over by the, the macro breweries. Uh, it's really nice to see brew pubs and micro breweries like this starting up and uh, that's a good trend, so cheers. We're back at the Bach Festival and we have found ourselves a Rausch Bach. Uh, the brewery is Hamel, a very interesting beer. Uh, smoky, but the Bach characteristics still come through. Um, slightly caramelly. Uh, not, the hops are, don't come through very good, but the, the smoke flavor of the grain is very apparent up front. Very nice beer. And we have to remember, though, that the Bach beers of the Netherlands are top fermented Bach beers. So they're going to be much fruitier, have a lot more esters, a lot more flavors than you would expect in, say, you know, a, a, a Muniker Bach. So, not, not, they're top, top fermented. Don't believe that. They're top fermented. Maybe the major breweries, bottom fermented beer, they can afford it. They have the tanks, they can do it. They can lager their beer. Certainly not the micro breweries. They're just going to, they're going to, uh, make their beer the same way as the rest. So this is their own beer style. Bach beer, B-O-K beer, is a unique beer style to the Netherlands. Top fermented, Bach, strong, little fruity, it's gonna have some different flavors. You know, they say uh, the Dutch don't have a beer, uh, a beer famous, world famous beer style. They're not known that much for their beers. I think more people should come over here and taste these beers. They really do. They're a style unto their own. 